Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning into the channel. My name is Dominic. I'm the host of the Android Factory. Last episode we went ahead and built out our collection view here in, in our rankings page of OpenSea, uh, a popular NFT marketplace. If you missed it, I'll link a card in the top right. All the code is available on GitHub uh, and we're just going to go ahead and finalize this work here. So uh, one thing that we do have, let's see if the emulator is still up, we do have the ability to basically you know, expand and collapse this uh, you know bottom section here along with the fact that we do have a little bit of a dynamic image being loaded here you know based on whatever uh, collection we have so we have both of these things I guess let's start with the image because it is very very straightforward as you see here we have our surface uh, we do have a color of our light gray we get that rounded corner shape here so that's what this guy is uh, for us and so we can very easily uh, you know inside of our surface scope there just go ahead and add in uh, not necessarily an image because that's for our you know local assets kind of like this uh, icon here for verified but instead we're going to need to use an async image so let's go ahead and implement this the model parameter is very straightforward we are just going to need the link to the URL and then a content description here for accessibilities so we'll just go with collection image. And just like that, we are done. It really is unbelievably simple that that is all we need to do, uh, you know, to load an image over the network. Now there is a little bit of magic here that's going on behind the scenes. And the most important part here is updating or adding in the coil compose library. I'm using version 2.2.2. Uh, and then with that, we get to update our manifest as well because we do need the internet permission uh, as we all forget when loading images over the internet and so that's about it async image comes from our coil package uh, so you won't have it if you don't have that dependency but once you do it works just like every other uh, you know image or every other composable that we see there's a lot of other you know things that we can modify as well I do just want to call out one of them. Yeah, so uh, if you could see by the mouse, we have an on loading state, we have an on success state, and then we have an on error state as well. So they give you nice little hooks and lambdas that you can implement to basically manage those different, you know, statuses as the image is loading. The one thing I'm going to do though is update our content scale to be the content scale.crop just to make sure that it fits properly and looks good. And then therefore it will yield, you know, this uh, icon looking thing. One thing I recognize that I did forget in the last episode uh, is we do need to update this image here, add this image only if the collection is verified. So if our OpenC collection dot is verified, then we simply add this bad boy in. Otherwise it just won't be there. I do think I kind of want to shrink that as well. So we'll put our padding and then we will apply a size of, I don't know, let's go with like 16 DP and see how that looks there. Just maybe shrink that down a tiny bit. It looks a little large. So yeah, I think that looks a little bit better uh, to be honest. So that is wonderful there. Uh, if you missed it in the last episode, we go ahead and create this data class here that just represents, you know, basically our UI model for the composable. That information gets passed into our composable and that's what we're working with. And in the last episode kind of just covered some of these data points here, but we do have an is verified Boolean to be true so that we can go ahead and uh, manipulate that. Really quickly, if we set this bad boy to false and rerun it here, we won't see that information there anymore. And there we have it. We see that the text, uh, you know, takes up all that info. But if anyone knows NFTs, Mutant Ape Yacht Club is definitely a verified collection. So we'll leave it as such. So uh, as a very small recap here, we can go ahead and just look at a very high level our, our content here provides or how this screen kind of comes together. Uh, inside of a row here, we do have the rank. We have that image and then we just have two columns down here to basically, you know, create this section and this section here. Now, as we saw in the emulator, as you click this more or less, not only does the text actually change on this button, but we do get this bottom section that kind of just animates in. So let's go ahead and cover that. If you've been enjoying it so far, smash that like button, subscribe if you are brand new, all that helps me out. Uh, which is much appreciated. So here we're going to go ahead and we love uh, Compose for this because we can very easily inside of this Composable say if we are expanded, let's add in another row here. Uh, and just to recap as well, this whole thing is wrapped in a column. So we will have this, you know, traditional row, what we see here, always present. 
and then we will optionally have an additional row here show that bottom section. Now the if is expanded will work. However, there is a better way of doing this. And instead of if is expanded, we can say animated visibility. Our visible is set to this is expanded Boolean. And then inside here, we can go ahead and paste our row and all the content. That will give us that really nice animation that we see here as it kind of drops down and collapses and expands. Otherwise, it would just snap open and close, which wouldn't be the end of the world. But, you know, again, we want to be uh, as clean and, and nice looking as possible. If we see here, sorry to keep bouncing back and forth between the emulator, but we see here that there is a 24 hour, you know, percent change. That's kind of what this value is here. So we always have this element and then we optionally have a whole bunch of other pieces of information that go here. If you remember from last episode here, we had a collection stat item composable here, which is a column that vertically and horizontally aligns our content, applies any external modifier, and then also has two text attributes here, uh, you know, set appropriately and kind of configured, right? The top one has a light gray and a font weight of light, and the other one gives, you know, the color that we provide to it, which defaults to white right here and uh, just a normal font weight. And so you can see that this text over here, you know, for floor price owners assets is a little bit lighter. And then this one underneath is just, you know, kind of normal. So we get, you know, each one of these sections here is uh, a collection stat item. So we can use that to our advantage here inside of this row. We're going to use our OpenSea collection. And so what I want to cover here is our other stats information. And so, you know, this is a map of string to string, key to value here. And if we look at how that is described here, we can see that we have, you know, floor price to 15.77, owners to this number, assets, etc. And we can just manipulate this map however we want, and our UI should react accordingly. So we're going to say open seat collection uh, dot other stats dot for each. And then we're basically inside of here just going to say collection stat item. Our label is going to be map entry dot key. Our value is going to be map entry dot value. And then our modifier here, let's go with a weight of one F, which when applied to multiple elements is going to cause all of them to take up as much room, uh, you know, equal room on within that row uh, amongst all of them. So we're going to go ahead and render this preview. Once it's done here, I'm going to go over here and click on this start interactive mode, which is really, really cool because you can basically get the composable to run without needing to put it in the emulator. The one thing it won't do is load in the image I've seen, but we can very easily click this more and less information. A little janky there as far as how the animation works, but we can very easily see um, that we are starting to get that UI that we care for here. Within our row, what we're going to do is apply a modifier where we're going to have, let's say, our padding. The top is going to be 16 dp. And before the row, we're going to use a spacer with the modifier dot height of, let's go with 0 0.5 dot dp. We'll put the background on the modifier uh, and a color of, let's go with light gray here. Uh, and that should be good enough. So if we go ahead and rerun things here, we should get a little bit of a divider in between. And we click the more to expand. Where is it? Come on. All right, so I'm not entirely sure what's going on here. It is working for most of it. It's just not, um, I don't know why it's not, you know, really displaying this spacer here. So I'm just gonna run it on our uh, actual emulator. Oh, I see a little bit of something here. So I made it green to help see it. And it looks like it is not working properly from a, from a width perspective. All right, so a fix, uh, a fill max width fixes that problem. So let's go ahead and change it to a light gray. And then um, I guess we need to apply the padding first. So let's try that instead. And there we have it. After applying both the padding uh, you know, after the fact, we do get this little bar to be the exact size that we're looking for here. All right, everybody. So I went ahead and updated and played around with a little bit of the animation. So again, we have our animated visibility, which is kind of tethered to this is expanded Boolean, uh, you know, which gets flipped by this button click here. Updated the exit animation to be a fade out. Just kind of seems like it works a little bit better 
Um, so you could see the content there when I click it kind of fade out and then everything kind of, you know, go away and, and it collapses. Uh, inside of the animated visibility, we do have a single column here that has our spacer uh, and then a row here uh, to just kind of, you know, describe exactly what we have here. So I'm going to actually put this back to 0 0.5 because I think one is a little thick for that. Uh, and then otherwise, I think our last little bit is just updating, uh, you know, this 24 hour trade volume here as our collection stat item. So inside of our row, before we iterate over, we can very easily say, our collection stat item, the label is going to be 24 hour percent. The value is going to be the open C collection uh, dot trade percent. And let's go ahead and say scale for display again. And then our modifier is going to be the same modifier dot weight one F. And we have one more param that we can override here with the value color equal to basically exactly what the last column has here. So if we are positive, then we're going to use green. Otherwise, we're going to use red. So if we go ahead and rerun things here, we should now see a fourth item down below. Wonderful. Very, very easy for us to, to add in there. I think we're just going to go ahead and we need to add in this plus percent kind of thing to make the text a little bit nicer. Other than that, we can see how simple it is to kind of modify this bottom section here based on the data that we have available to us. So let us go over to the rankings activity, which is just a clone of our main activity. And we modified the manifest to open this activity when we launched the app. So this is the data that we're actually describing here. This is why we have, uh, you know, five items on screen and they all have a different height. Uh, or sorry, a little spacer in between them. So it wasn't complete magic, right? This is just uh, how things are uh, being displayed. We're updating the different ranks here. And let's say for rank one, we are going to, we're just going to update this. We're gonna say collection stats two, and we're just gonna remove this floor price item here. So we're just gonna simply remove one of those stats. And down here, we're just gonna say our other stats for that one equals our, um, collection stats too. So we go ahead and rerun things here and we will see that we can now have, uh, you know, four of them down here. And then in this case, we only have three right there, right? And so our views, our UI is kind of updating differently as it should. Uh, and, you know, we kind of see that it will scale, you know, uh, assuming there aren't too, too many items here, you know, we'll, we'll be able to see a bunch of places here that have or a bunch of UI components here that are all kind of spread equal in this bottom row here. But that about wraps it up for this uh, episode here and this little collection screen here. So thank you for following along. If you made it this far, please comment down below real fan. Again, all the code is available on GitHub. So go ahead and check it out if you need it. Uh, and otherwise, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.